esotericism. That means out of the ordinariness. <laughs> offers an exposition, an etymological exposition, <laughs> exhibiting the multipotent pliability of the player's theatre, plus none other than Mr. Robin Hunter! <laughs> gregarious kind of people, we like to have intercourse with our visitors. In the nicest possible way, that is, of course. <laughs> Trouble is, sometimes they don't understand what we're talking about. Now, it's true, I'm not just sitting here on the green gauge giving you a load of orchestra stalls. So, to solve this little communication problem, I've written this little song. It's called Rhyming Slang. And the first verse goes... Something like this. Now, I am a genuine cockney. I'm not a Geordie or a Brummy or a Scass. And the sound of both bells can be clearly heard from the roof of me little old house. Now, i got a funny way of talking. And I do it most of the time. Cos when I use a word, it's not the word what I've heard, but another what with it will rhyme. Rhyming slang, rhyming slang, that's the cockney way you see. Rhyming slang, rhyming slang, you can learn to talk like me. So just put on your rhyme afloat, grab your tip for tat. Take a ball of talk, that's a little walk, down the rubber gut, how's that? Cos, if you're a genuine cockney, your beer is your old... It's here! And your trouble and strife. That's your dear little wife. She's your donor and your lover so dear. Your fire is your animal liar. And your door is your Rory O'Moore. Yes, when we say a word, it's not the word what we heard, but another what we're searching for. If you are thoracic lint, and you, and you want to tumble down a sink, you've got to find some bees and honey. Money. Yeah. Of course, you can always have a drink on the garden gate. Ah, you know this lady, madam, yes. But you've got to be very careful to pay up, otherwise the governor may give you a swift kick right up your aris. Ah. <laughs> Now that's a difficult one, that. That's double. That's Aris, that's Aristotle, that's bottle, that's bottle and glass, and that's what you can to kick. <laughs> On the other hand, you could get a bunch of fives right in your eye, I suppose. Cos if you're a genuine cockney, uh, your nose is your... I suppose! And your great big mouth is your... No, you can see how the language grows. <laughs> Your best Sunday suit is your Whistland flutes. And your boots are your Daisy boots. Yes, when we say a word, it's not the word what we heard. Cos for grammar, we don't give two hoops. All together now, right? <laughs>
twinning of juvenescent jocundity, still very young, the James Boy. <laughs> Like the girl that married dear old dad She was a pro and the only girl my daddy ever had A good old-fashioned girl with heart so true One who loves nobody else but you Okay. Why don't you come out here in the moonlight? There's something sweet love I want to say. I want to sing about my baby. Your heart, nearby I'm waving. Those who be lips to greet. When you croon, you croon a tune from the heart of a Dixie. Just in the cradle of an mine, right on that Mason Dixon line, and swing it from Virginia to Tennessee with the Lord and you a weep. No more, my lady, sing that song again for me. Sing it soft and low. Just as though you had me on your knee. A million baby kisses, I'll remember. If you will only sing that Swanee River. Your rock of my baby. With a Johnson Tapsicorean. Tapsicory with an Anne at the end. Transports inimitably initiated in imperturbably impeccable immaculacy by Mr. Richard Hell! <laughs> That's my little, little granddaughter, Caroline. <laughs> I say, don't you look lovely? <laughs> you really do. You look absolutely marvelous. Gold. <laughs> you do, really. This, you know, this is my fourth time here. My fourth time. And what do you think I've got to do? They want me to dance the Lancers. <laughs> oh. You want me to dance the Lancers? Yes! You must be potty. <laughs> well then, if there's anybody here, if there happens to be anybody here who hasn't seen me dance the Lancers, may I just explain? 
I want you to use your imagination. I want you to imagine that this is an old Victorian ballroom and dotted about a lot of old Victorian couples, rather like we have in front here. <laughs> <laughs> All beautiful. <laughs> have, you, have you by any chance some, uh, some Victorian Lancers music? Yes, we yeah. have. Would you like to play it for me? <laughs> Thank you. Aphrodisiac. The sergeant should know what that means. <laughs> if not, you tell him, madam. <laughs> Effulgent in roseate efflorescences, Miss Jan Curry! As a snowy white dog, I'm simply created to love. The fellows all sigh for me, they'd even die for me. I am the bell of New York. She danced like this in a haughty manner. But the lady from France, she danced like this in a naughty manner. Now, 
which do you like the best, monsieur? Now which do you like to see? The proud and haughty American girl? Or the lady from gay Paris? Ah, la belle Parisienne, I do captivate you now. My skirt's just so, it's a little kick that makes the dancing prancing. The feathers all sigh for me, they'd even die for me. I am the bear of New York. discover the perfect lover <laughs> is he <laughs> someday I knew I'd recognize him if ever he came down my way I always used to fancy them He'd be one of the godlike kind of men with a giant brain and a noble head, like the hero's boat in the books I read. But along came Bill. He's not the type at all. You'd see him on the streets and never notice him. His form and face, his manly grace are not the kind that you would find in a statue. And I can't explain, surely not his brain that made me free. I love him because he's wonderful, because he's just my being. And I can't explain, surely not his brain that me. Aphrodisiac music. <laughs> Unabashed, in irreducibly exuberant, ebullient buffoonery, once again, Mr. Robin Hunter!
Jones was a fella who went the pace with all his youthful might and took a great delight in staying out all night. When people were thinking of going to bed around the west he'd roam. He'd go to pubs and go to clubs but never would go home. But one night inside the club he gave his pals a fright when he said I'm going home and wished them all good night. They thought that he was joking and they all laughed out of loud. <laughs> But Jones looked very serious as he shouted to the crowd. Oh, I, I must go home tonight. I must go home tonight. I don't care if it's snowing or blowing. I'm going. I only got married this morning. It fills me with delight. I'll stay out as long as you like next week. Wait for it. <laughs> Rebellion swine. But I must go home tonight. Ah, oh, oh, that's painful, madam. Especially in these trousers. <laughs> you like the suit? Smart. It's all a facade, a theatrical facade. Look at that tie. Look at that. Ridiculous. Bleeding that doesn't fit. Look. Well, what are the words, Fitzgerald? What do you think I'm doing up here? Off to the station he made a dash to ask about his train To take him home again But he asked all in vain They said there's none running at all tonight To where you want to go All traffic is suspended Cos the line's blocked up with names He walked up and down the platform Anything but gay This is him Walking up and down the platform When I first did this song 20 years ago The director said do something gay. This is it. <laughs> Pathetic, isn't it? A porter said, you'll have to wait till morning, I'm afraid. But Joan said, that's impossible. I cannot be delayed. All together now. Oh, I, I must go home tonight. I must go home tonight. I don't care if it's snowing. I'm going. I only got married this morning. It fills me with delight. I'll stay out as long as you like. They speak silence. <laughs> but I must go home tonight. Diddly die, die, diddly dumpy da da. Ah, oh, doesn't get any easier. Very difficult step this. Leonard Sachs taught me this step. Well, he didn't teach me, it's how he walks. <laughs> how to the station he made a dive and in the street he land. He yelled and waved his hand for a handsome off the strand. He gave his address to the driver and in confidence agreed to give me buck a dook a buck a look a buck a boo. I never learned that bit ever. But smash! But the handsome pole, the speed was far too high. Said Jones, I don't live up here, as he shot in the sky. He landed on the pavement. On the pavement. And a policeman said, Hello! We'll take you to the hospital. Where the hospital people go. But Jones, he whispered, no. Ladies and gentlemen, this juncture. I'm going to do a knee drop. 20 years ago, a knee drop was to me a matter of course. Tonight, it may be the last knee drop I ever did. Oh, I, I must go home tonight. I must go home tonight. I don't get it. It's no Meandering malapropism, the one and only Miss Hilda 
Peca. Hey, shut up. <laughs> I feel awkward, you know. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just looking for my friend, you see. <laughs> Do you happen to have seen her? She's tall. She's tall and blonde with sort of uh, aquamarine features. And she wears her hair in a kind of nutcracker sweet. She looks a bit like Lola Brigadier. <laughs> Well, as a matter of fact, uh, I think it was yesterday, a fella took her for Lola Brigadier. <laughs> then the police took him for being drunk and disorderly. <laughs> no, I can't. Oh, she did. <laughs> Cynthia! I said, where are you dashing to? Come here, I want you. But... Ooh. I wish you wouldn't keep your puss down there. It's one of those with a twisted top. He's got a I mean, where, where have you been? Eh? Hey? It's quarter past... Oh, I must get a little hand for Tom. <laughs> Where have you been, eh? I told you to be soon, didn't I? Be soon, I said. Be soon. <laughs> Look at her. She looks through you. I won't care, but she knows, you know. <laughs> Just won't let on, you see. That's it. Right, <laughs> She's not all she should be. <laughs> no, she's not been the same since she fell off there Alfred's tantrum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, oh, what, what, a, what a thing that was, you know. Well, there was three of them on it, you see. Now, it should only be two on a tantrum, shouldn't they, you see? <laughs> and uh, they were riding along. You'd only gone about 15 yards, had you? About 15 yards! Say, so, yeah, 15 yards, when a dog comes right in front of him, so she being the biggest, she went right over the top and hit herself right into the lamppost. There, Alice, she was the first one, she had to come to. Alice, she came to herself, out of herself, and she shouted to her fellow, she said, fetch the doctor. So, um, uh, well, she knows Alice does, because she works at the hospital, she's a nurse there. Well, not exactly a nurse. She's a cleaner there, you know, so... <laughs> She knows what she's doing. She's clever and she Alice. Clever you're Alice. Mm. <laughs> Nobody can mix centipods like that, Alice, you know. <laughs> oh, she really ought to be certified, you know. Anyway, she fetched the doctor, they see this, uh, the fella. And uh, the doctor, he only looked at you once, didn't he? He said, I'm no use to her, he said. What this girl needs is the psychiatrist, you see. <laughs> anyway, uh, she went to the psychiatrist and he says, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, he said to her, he says, I won't be able to diagnose your case today, he says. Come back Thursday. Thursday, yes, I've just told them that, Thursday, he says, and I'll pike home and analyse you. <laughs> you could feel the strength leaving her body, you know, because <laughs> she's never had it, you see. And then he tried to delve. Well, that's what he said he was doing. He says, uh, I'm trying to delve into her past. He says, are you married? Are you married, he said to you then, didn't he? So she said, no, she said. And that's when I butted in. I said, no, I said, she's not married. But she's not being neglected. <laughs> well, I wasn't letting him have all his own way because she's not. I mean, that fellow that she went out with, you know. Oh, he was... <laughs> you were... Uh, <laughs> He was a sailor, wasn't he? A sailor? Yes. He asked you to marry him, didn't he? Yes. He was a sailor. Well, he wasn't exactly a sailor. He leads a horse down the canal bank. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, wherever there was a canal, I mean, um, 
he'd have to be there, wouldn't he? You see, and when you get married, you want them at home, don't you? Well, at first you do, any road, anyway. <laughs> she should worry and spoil her shape because she's a beautiful actress. Oh, she's what? She's been in the amateurs now. How long have been in the amateurs now? Twelve years, twelve years at the amateurs. Yeah. She hasn't been on yet, but um, <laughs> I'll get her to give you a, uh, a few uh, things that, uh, where, that she did, a few ex exceptions from her repertory, and uh, you'll hear her speak, and when she speaks, it's like silk. Well, she's had lessons in electrocution. Come over here a minute. That's right. Now, if I... <laughs> I said, come over there, I didn't say dash off. Full pelt. Come here. I want you to, to, to do something for the ladies and gentlemen. You know, do something about, uh, for, for the ladies and gentlemen. Um, do that thing you did on the charabang. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> no, don't do that, no. Uh, no, I'll tell you what, better still, I'll get her to tell you a joke, she's ever so comical. She has me in stitches of laughter. <laughs> I'll tell the ladies and gentlemen a joke, love, that's it. <laughs> a joke! <laughs> tell that one that you told on the charabang. And after you told it, they all had to stop the charabang because they all wanted... Eh? <laughs> <laughs> eh? About that, um, that, that spinster. <laughs> that spinster who wasn't married. And she was talking to the woman next door who was married. And the woman next door who was married said to the spinster who wasn't married, Are you lonely, living by yourself? And the spinster says, Who knew, she says, because I have a thousand goldfish. <laughs> thousand goldfish, it's a lot, isn't it, you know? <laughs> anyway, yeah, the woman was taken aback, she says. A thousand goldfish, she said. Because she, 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 she'd peeped through the curtains many a time and she hadn't seen anything. So she says, um, where do you put them? <laughs> <laughs> Tell them where, she says, she puts them. <laughs> where, she says, I put them in the bath. In the bath, said the woman. Well, what do you do with the goldfish when you want to take a bath? <laughs> <laughs> Tell her what she said she does with the goldfish when she wants to take a bath. <laughs> Where she says I blindfold them. <laughs> Enhancing Hibernian Ooh. harmonies, your own, your very own, Mr. Val Julica. <laughs> And love is pleasing And love is a pleasure When first it's new But as it grows older Then love grows colder And fades away Like the morning dew I left me father I left me mother I left me brothers and sisters too 
I left all me friends and me fine relations. I left them all for the love of you. I love is Jesus, and love is pleasing, and love is a pleasure when first it's new. But as it grows older, then love grows colder and fades away like the morning dew. Thank you very much. Good evening to you all. Good evening. I've been asked to sing, in fact, ladies and gentlemen, a little Irish song. This is a song, actually, I learned when I was a child, because when I was a child, like lots of other people, all my family, we would sit around in the evening and sing songs in harmony. That's true. People would come for miles to complain about it. <laughs> and, uh, ready? Here we go. Shh. <laughs> Oh, Rafferty's pig was a wonderful animal. <laughs> no, please, please. <laughs> Built like a battleship solid and stout. <laughs> his ignorance would have disgraced any cannibal. Impotence written all over his snout. <laughs> the night he got out, there was such a commotion. The women were screaming and men turned in pain. Running and jumping, colliding and bumping, and everyone making a gravity's take. <laughs> Mickey Malone, the heavyweight champion, ran at the pig with a big rolling pin. He missed it a blow, caught Mrs. Monroe, and lifted her bustle up under her chin. <laughs> Widow Malone fell through the shop window in pickles and jam and red heron she lay <laughs> with eggs and tomatoes all over her garters. <laughs> <laughs> the night that old Rafferty's pig ran away. <laughs> this is the last verse. <laughs> then a terrible crowd led by Dennis Cassidy chased a good vengeance from Dublin to Cork. And didn't they swear when the pig with audacity jumped on a tram and sat watching him walk? <laughs> he ran through the legs of old Councillor Duffy, a man of great standing and lofty ideas. And when they collided, old Duffy backslided. And down went the stand in a 25 years. <laughs> Buck's wooden leg was broken and shattered. He lay on his back shouting, Dr. Lamont. <laughs> Barney O'Toole said, don't be a fool. It's a hammer and saw and a joiner you want. <laughs> <laughs> then came the news that the pig had been captured. The town had a Thanksgiving supper that day with cabbage and bacon unlawfully taken. The night that old Rafferty's pig <laughs> ran away. They give me funny looks all the time. <laughs> Do you feel like a little sing? Yes. Go on then. <laughs> no. no, really, I've, I'm going to sing you a song. I'm going to sing you a song that's been sung around the music halls by two colleagues of ours, a double act, and who knows, one day this song might even be a hit. Here we go. <clears throat> on a mountain in Virginia, Stands a lonesome pine 
Neath the shade in the cabin wood lives that little girl of mine. Her name is June, and very, very soon she'll belong to me. For I know she's waiting there for me neath that old pine tree. In the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, on the trail of the lonesome pine, in the pale moonshine, a heart's entwined, where she carved her name, and I carved mine, oh, June. Like the mountains, I'm blue, like the pine, I am lonesome. solo. That's not you. <laughs> Ready? In the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, on the trail of the lonesome pine, when the pale moon shines, a heart sent twine, where she carved her name, and I carved mine, oh, June, like the mountains like the pine, I am lonesome for you. Ladies? Gentlemen, there's just time to ask Miss Hilda Baker and Mr. Val Doonikin to lead you in the last chorus for tonight down at the Old Bull and Bush. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Hilda Baker, Mr. Val Doonikin, the entire company, Mr. Bernard Herman, the, the entire and inexhaustible orchestra. Yeah. But this time, chiefly. <laughs> <laughs> 